So today, I'd like to tell you about the Upstraw project, which is a European project that we've been involved in. And um, just bearing in mind the sort of theme of the day that Bryn has been talking about there, is it worth doing things small? How, how can we upscale it? Is it a good idea to upscale it? It's something that I wanted to just sort of talk about a little bit, really. So, who are we? Well, we have three things going on here. Interreg is the pot of money which um, funds the Upstraw project. We are the School of Natural Building, and we're also a company called Straw Works, which is a predominantly um, a group of architects and structural engineers who uh, are all self-employed, but they know how to design with straw. So this is mostly a design company. This is a training company. As for the personnel, we mostly are. My business partner is the well-known Barbara Jones. Uh, if you Google straw bale building, you'll come up with Barb's name and her book and all the rest of it. I am the lesser well-known Eileen Sutherland. Um, but nevertheless, you know, I've made the journey. Um, so, um, School of Natural Building, SNAB for short, which I'll refer to as we go on, Straw Works Limited and the Upstraw Project. So I thought we'd look at today a little bit of background of straw bale building. I hope I'm not sort of teaching my grandmother to suck eggs. I don't know what the background of you all is. So um, we'll just do a little bit of that and then why we should build with straw and then go on to the Upstraw Project and hopefully have a bit of time for questions if you've got any. So where did it all begin? Straw bale building began in Nebraska uh, in the 1800s because there was no um, wood. The settlers had no wood to build with and so they looked around, saw all the cereal crops. Somebody very clever, happily, invented the baler and they managed to make sort of big straw bricks, if you like, and started to build with straw. This is a more finished version um, of, from 1925. And these two here, I think this one, something might have happened to this one, I'm not very sure, but this one here is the home of the French Straw Bale Association, the Fayette House, and I've been there, and it's great, and you would, you would never know it was straw, of course, because it's covered in ivy, it just looks like anything else. But the French Straw Bale Association are hoping to do a straw bale extension to it. But people often say to me, you know, oh, how long will, uh, will a straw house last? I say, well, we've got a little bit of evidence. This one is, is still going and, and being used from 1921. And you'd be pushed to get a, brock, a block and brick house, you know, still in such good nick after all this time. So, four building methods. Load bearing, where the straw walls bear the load of the roof. Now then, for, in our business, I'm the non-technical person. Barb is the technical person. But I have got a bit of previous because I did build a straw bale house in Bulgaria with my family and we used the load bearing technique. So you're building where the, uh, there's no timber frame and you're putting, putting uh, you've got like a, a wooden ladder which is a, a base plate. It's got rungs going across, it's got a hole in the rungs and you stick in a pointed stick all the way along. And then you get your bale and put it on and so you carry on. Four courses, pointed stick down, three courses, pointed stick down, and then you put your roof plate on, you drop the roof. You compress the walls and then drop the roof. So there's not, not very much timber. It's a very, it's a very easy way for people to learn to build, people who haven't got experience in construction, and it's also cheaper. There is, however, infill, which is a timber frame, and you put the bales in like Lego. Often people use this hybrid one because with load bearing, you don't want more than one wall to have uh, more than 50% of glass. So if you wanted to put in a big glass frontage, you tend to have a timber frame on that bit and load bearing on the rest, which is hybrid. And now, of course, these days there's prefab. And uh, outside, I've put some leaflets outside. And one of them is this one here um, about prefab straw bale which is a company called Eco Cocon. They're actually from Lithuania, but they do a very good product and we like it. Um, so you might want to have a look at that at some point. So if you're going to, say, develop 100 straw bale houses, you wouldn't want to um, build in the artisan way that we build. You know, prefab would probably be much better. So here's a few examples. This is one of the earliest load-bearing ones in the UK. Uh, still standing. And still, use it, and still being used. 
This one is very nice. This um, won the Grand Designs Eco Home of the Year in, in 2008, built by a woman called Rachel. It did take a very long time, but it was very cheap. And she now uh, runs it as an organisation called Quiet Earth. If you Google Quiet Earth, you'll see she does yoga courses and things there. This was built all with volunteers. Barbara designed it. And um, I'd just like to tell you that in 2005, I was one of the volunteers that did the clay plaster on the inside. Now with clay plaster, you usually have three coats. And I happened to be there when they were doing the second coat, which I think you'll find was the best one. But unfortunately, they put another one on the top, so you can't actually see my work. But never mind, I know it's there. Um, this is a very large building. It was the largest one until quite recently. I think there might be a bigger one now. But this is an auctioneer's near Stansted that we built. And um, they auction a lot of paintings, which have to have a... Um, I want to say continuous, I don't really mean that. A steady temperature. So they want to keep everything just the same. And they found that straw bill worked very well for them. Um, this one was the first car tyre approved foundations. Bob came up with this idea. So you've got car tyres, fill them with pea shingle and uh, use as pillar foundations. We don't use any cement or concrete in our work. So why use straw? Well, for all of these reasons, really. It's locally available, normally. Um, it's really structurally strong, durable, cost-effective, simple, accessible, and it's absolutely beautiful. Also, the things that people ask us are usually, what about fire? The bales that we use are usually about 900 mil by 350 by 450, and they're packed so tight, they weigh about 25 kilo. And so there's no oxygen in there. So it's very difficult to get a fire going. So what happens is it tends to smolder if you have a fire. And the BRE did a um, test with the Manchester Fire Service and it took two hours, 40 minutes to get through that wall. Whereas if you had a timber wall, of course, it would go up literally like a light. So that's the um, fire one. The other one is about uh, mice. People always ask about mice. Straw is not hay. Hay has seeds in it, so therefore there's food in it. Straw is em an empty husk. So there's no food in there for mice. So if they did manage to burrow in, there's nothing to eat and there's no oxygen. So they would just die and add to the mass of the straw. <laughs> and then, which, I'm sorry about there's any animal rights here. That's not good, is it? But, uh, and then you'd plaster them in, you know, just to finish off the job. Um, and the, uh, the other thing is that uh, people always say, oh, you know, the... Um, Three Little Pigs. And he said, God, never heard of that before. And um, we always say that the wolf was working for the uh, cement industry. <laughs> um, so, the next one. It's also thermally and acoustically efficient. For building regulations, you have to have a U-value of 0.25. The lower the U-value, the better. And for us with straw, it's 0.13. Um, and when plastered, 0.11. So it's very um, thermally efficient and a lot of, um, you know, the fuel costs are much lower than in a brick and block house. Is there enough straw? People worry a little bit about that. Well, this is the latest stat I've got. I need to get a, another one. But we produced 5.6 million of waste straw. At one time, if we weren't going to use straw, you know, for animal feed or whatever, we had to plough it back into the ground. And now there's a rule you can't keep on ploughing it back into the ground, as I'm sure you permaculturists know. Um, so we have all this surplus straw. And if we baled it, and we looked at how many bales for a three-bedroomed house, 350, we could, with this amount of straw, build 640,000 three-bedroomed houses. So, you know... I think we have to tell Teresa we've got this housing crisis, haven't we? And we've got some, we've got some materials here and we could do something. Um, so this brings me to the Upstraw project. Um, the School of Natural Building is a training organisation. Um, Barbara is a bit younger than me, uh, not that much, and she's, um, 
you know, she's of an age that probably she should stop climbing around roofs and things like that. So we had to look for some succession planning. What was going to happen? She's done a lot of work for about 30 years in this industry, this sector. What was going to happen when she retired? So we looked around and thought, well, OK, we'll try and um, increase the pool of natural builders in the UK. So that's actually what the School of Natural Building was set up for. And we established that in October 14. And we've had 53 people through so far. When I say through, some of them are still going through. Depends on how fast you want to do it. But we are steadily increasing the pool of natural builders in the UK. So we got asked to be part of this Upstraw project. And uh, these are the partners here because it's funded by Interreg, which is an ERDF um, pot of money, but it just covers Northwest Europe. So there are only certain countries that could be invited to take part. Um, the purpose is to increase the percentage of public buildings built out of straw. So schools, hospitals, universities, visitor centres, anything public, railway stations, anything. Um, we started last year and we're finishing December 2020. In the UK, we have a sub-partner, which is a, a thing called Straw Bill UK, SBUC for short. SBUC was established about 18 months ago, and that's a group of straw bale builders, like an association of straw bale builders. You can Google them, and the, if you're looking for a straw bale builder in the UK, that's where some of them are. So they're our partner, and we have started on this project. Those of you who've been involved in a, straw, in a European project will know there are work packages in every European project, and these are the work packages here. The one that we are uh, in charge of is teaching and gathering knowledge. And all of the five partners have a particular investment project. By that, I mean they build a building. And the building that we're going to build will be the visitor centre at Hastings, and then in the country park there. We hope to start around about May-June time. So it's very close here, and you know it's going to be great. It's going to be really exciting. So this is our responsibility, teaching, gathering knowledge, because it fits very well with our school. Um, and this is our objective, which is why today is useful, very helpful for me. Our objective really is to train undergraduates and professionals in the construction center, uh, sector in the reasons why and the techniques for building with straw. Raising awareness is one thing, and that's great. I mean, this is one of the events to raise awareness. But, and, uh, hang on, I want to go back there, sorry. I can't. Oh, yes, I can. There we go. Um, raising awareness is one thing. I say, okay, straw build, build, building is a great thing. Come on, we should all be doing it. Um, and somebody gets fired up and says, right, great, I want to build a straw bale building. Who's going to do it? So this pool of builders is still quite small. People who've got this expertise are still quite small, so it's still hard to find somebody. And it's very hard to find architects and structural engineers who know, who know how to design with the bale in mind. It's very difficult because that sort of natural building technique isn't ta taught at undergrad level. So we're looking to develop a module at undergrad level for architects, structural engineers, planners, building services, undergrads. We're looking to also develop a module for professionals in the construction se sector who uh, want a sort of CPD, continuous professional development module, so that we can actually make sure that those people who are in a position to specify can specify, and they're, they're taking it as a real good alternative. So, it, it's quite, quite a job. Um, where are we? There. So, the current position, the partners and us have taken this three-step approach. An introductory day, which we've taught at Not Nottingham Trent University so far, and to a, um, a firm of insurers who recently approached us because they've been asked to um, insure more straw bale houses than they ever have in the past. So that's a good thing. Introductory day. And then there's a, um, a programme that's already been developed on a previous European project, not by us, uh, called um, Straw Bale Training for European Professionals, STEP. You can find it there. 
and we're going to use some of that material that's already developed for a more substantial course, perhaps about 40, 50 hours as a module. And then finally, we'll put everything online in a MOOC. When I say me, I have no idea how to do that, but fortunately the Dutch partner does. So, um, so that's the sort of way that we're going to try and infiltrate um, architects, existing architects and builders and undergrads. So, so far, we've raised awareness here. Nottingham Trent did a thing up in Glasgow for the Scottish Ecological Design Association. Uh, the insurance company I just mentioned to you before. Um, the SPB, I don't know if you know this, it's the um, Association or the Alliance of Sustainable Building Products. Did a very nice healthy buildings conference uh, the other week at UCL. Um, the Arts University at Bournemouth, the s Book Builders, have just done that last weekend, and they built a mini straw bale cinema, and then show, showed a, a film in there for the students. Uh, and then here today. So gradually we're getting a bit more awareness out there. So the, the premise today, when I got sent the information from Stella, was, is it worth doing things small? small? Well, yes, I think it is, because you have to start somewhere, don't you? and permaculture, straw bale building, all the natural building sector, we've all started doing small things that we can then case study, case, you know, show off and, 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 and make a case study from. But we're now at this point where I think we're at, we're at a stage where we could actually make a step change and we could become a little bit more mainstream. And one of the questions posed today was where's the architectural and design community heading? I don't know. You tell me. Is there a, is there a, um, is there a thirst for natural building? Are, do architects prefer to work with brick and block and concrete and so on? Um, is, there, is there a movement where people are interested in this? I just want to tell you a quick story up beside me in the northeast. You probably can't tell from my voice because it's terribly RP that I come from the northeast. Um, but uh, there's a very nice building beside us, a visitor centre. And uh, an architect who didn't know anything about straw bale building was hired to design it. And you know, the bale has 90 degree angles. And so you don't want to design an acute angle. And so he did. And you know, the building is beautiful. It's fantastic. It's finished now. But it was built by volunteers and there were 600 bales needed in that. And each bale comes as a bale with two strings around it, really tight. And in order to accommodate this acute angle, all the bales used in that bit had to be put in a box with a guillotine and cutting off the corner, which, of course, cut through the, the strings, which meant the bale fell apart, which meant you had to rebale it again. And it just caused so much work. And although it's a lovely building, I can't say you needed that acute angle. So, you know, it's just things like that that make life a bit easier if if architects know what they're doing with straw. Um, let's just have a little look here. Yeah, if you'd like to get involved with UpStraw, we're looking to deliver our introductory course to companies and universities. Um, please give me a shout. There's also a thing called the Big Straw Bale Gathering in Wales at a, um, a project called Down to Earth in August, which would be great fun if anybody fancies going. Um, meanwhile... There's a couple of uh, examples of public buildings here that are already built out of straw. This is a National Trust one that we were involved in some years ago. Lovely building. These are the first straw bale council houses um, commissioned by North Stephen Council in Lincolnshire. And uh, there are four of them, two lots of semis. And there are some um, stats. Lincoln University followed them up. And there's a, a, a matrix about how much less fuel is being used by the occupants in these houses. So it's very interesting to read that. Oh, sorry. Haringey. Haringey is very nice. This used to be Broadwater Farm, if you remember that. And this is a very lovely community centre now that all of the community have been involved in. And we're, we're doing some training there next month. It's a very nice atmosphere. And oh, I hope I haven't gone past the half. I'm going to go back again because I want you to see it. This, this is a great project. This is happening now in Tulse Hill in London. And um, it's, a, it's a church. 
The, we ha we, throughout the winter, we run a suite of four one-day introductory courses. And the vicar, Richard, came on one of our courses three years ago. And then he raised the money to build a um, church hall. It's absolutely vast. And uh, it was going to be out of straw bales using uh, car tire foundations. And he, we said, who's going to do it? He said, oh, the community. The community will be fine. Most of the community are Afro-Caribbean women in the 60s and 70s. And uh, Richard has, has filmed them doing everything and set these little bits of YouTube stuff to Caribbean, to Calypso music and that sort of thing. They're amazing. There's such energy there. And when they get onto the straw part, it's going to be really fun. So if you're down in Tulse Hill, go and have a look. They'll be pleased to see you. Uh, that one you've seen. This is a great one. And I've just seen a photograph of it, actually, with all the scaffolding down and all the glass in and everything. The, the cafe isn't quite open yet. This is in Preston. Um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful vista, semicircular cafe, all glass. So they've used a hybrid method with the timber at the front and the load bearing at the back. Um, and it looks down over a sort of lovely vista. So that is going to be fantastic. And it's the first LBC. That's um, Living Building Challenge uh, project. It's an American thing where you have to, um, it's about cradle to grave, you know, making sure that none of the materials you use are uh, unsustainable. So it'd be great if they can hit that as well.